Okay. Dr. Brian, thank you so much. Dude, for taking it's such time an honor. To be a part of the book launch. Man, this is amazing. <laughs> so good, it's man. Happening. Well, and one of the things that uh, I love always your perspective on family, marriage, kids, parenting, the whole thing. And uh, so I'm really, really excited to have you speak into this because mm -hmm. not only are you, um, have you worked so amazingly with myself, my wife, our family in the therapist role. You have obviously become such a great friend and family with Awakened Church and spoken into so many different environments from, you know, obviously our marriage getaway to just our weekend services. And, and I love how you bring God's word w mixed in with your clinical training and understanding and education. And that's what I love because I don't, I don't just want uh, from a parenting standpoint to just try to implement latest practices from a culture that doesn't understand God's word, right? I want to, I want to be bringing the truth of God's word to people. And that's where, you know, the emphasis on the biblical uh, parenting is so important. So mm. thank you for jumping on. Man, thank you for writing this book. I feel like we need more and more resources because just like you said, something I see in our field is because our field is driven. Mental health, the field of mental health is just driven by like emerging pop culture ideas. And so a new idea will pop up. It'll take over. Everybody will think this is the answer. And then like three years later, it's totally taboo when we move on. And, and it's really not until you ground it on God's word that you actually see, oh, these are principles that stand the test of time, you know? So... Yeah. That's yeah. super good. It, it's similar to like health fads. It's like, you know, yeah. butter's awesome. Then butter's amazing uh, or, or bad for you. And then it's back. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, yeah. gluten's good. No, it's bad. Um, you know, you need to not drink dairy. Now it's like actually soy and some of these other milks are bad for you. You're like, okay. <laughs> uh, obviously. Uh, That's it we're all learning as we go here is is i think the uh the principle for life so but that's why i think when it comes to something as important as raising our children and we don't want to just go by trial and error based on the latest guru and what they're saying we want to get back to the truth of god's word mm -hmm. so that we can build them healthy so um i i've been kind of asking just some fun, you know, almost like parenting, uh, you know, what was maybe the most eye-opening thing for you as you and your wife as young parents when you first were getting into it and learning? It's like, what, what surprised you? What shocked you? Uh, you know, what was some of those big eye-opening moments? Maybe some stories you wish somebody wouldn't ask you to tell, but here I am asking you to tell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got those. For sure, we got those. Man, I remember just because just you, you, you teed me up that way, just because you framed it as like the lesson part, like funny stories you learn a lesson. I remember, um, I remember when Liv, our, she was now in middle school, when she was like an infant, um, we took a plane trip. She was like just old enough to fly. Um, we're on a plane and she's crying and we're like doing everything we can to calm her down you know there's a, there's a few champions in the in this in the plan that are like man solidarity we get it we're parents <laughs> and there's a couple of people that are just giving us these looks and the and the more i feel the pressure of that i've been a dad for all of you know nine or ten months the more i feel the pressure of that the more the more i try and like quiet live down and i just remember feeling like god just spoke to my heart and said brian we're crying right now that's what we're doing we're yeah. crying I remember just this like realization that um, parenting does not happen on our schedule. You know, no, parenting no. is something where we set the container, yeah. but they determine the steps, right? They determine yeah. what, what is happening in those moments. And it's just like, yeah. oh, I just, I just have to accept this. Yeah. Parenting, yeah. parents are crying. Crying is what we're yeah. doing right now. Sorry, yeah. guys, we're crying. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. happening. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's, it, that's, Funny, and but also I think it's a great thought because I, I think sometimes, you know, m and maybe you could kind of talk through the difference here. Um, in one hand, we don't want hands-off parenting where we're just letting our kids kind of do what they want, 
think what they want, engage what they want, go by all their emotions. You know, we need to be stepping in. Having said that, there's just a real reality that there's a lot of reacting and uncertainty and unknowns. And, you know, I, I don't want to just be parenting my kid because uh, or correcting my kid because I'm embarrassed, you know, because, you know, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You're in a plane and everyone's looking at you and you're like, ah, I know, I'm sorry, I'm trying, you know. So it, sometimes if we're not careful, my parenting becomes much more on impressing what my peers think, what other people yeah. around me in the crowd thinks versus actually going, okay, I'm dealing with this, I'm present in the moment, I'm leading my kids forward, I'm discipling my kid, I'm challenged, whatever the scenario might be. Yeah. No, man, you, you have this great, you have this great, um, great line in the book where I'm going to butcher it. But basically what you say is the, one of the greatest ways that you can raise a healthy adult is to be mm. a healthy adult. I think it's in the same, it's in the same yep. place where you're basically, you're basically saying like, um, that, that is, a your kids are going to allow you to face your giants. I think is, is the, yep. the language you use. And it's just brilliant. It's exactly what it is. Like I think of kids are a mirror that reflect back to us our our ego, our fears, our sin, our insecurities, and, and all the ways that we try and control our lives that don't work. Um, and just like you were saying, man, when when you're in a space where they're testing that that feeling of control, um, it's really more about say, oh, okay, I think my four-year-old in my own heart needs to be reassured that it's okay that my kids are normal right now that that's yeah. an okay thing and i'm not failing uh you know one of the things i i say uh really frequently when i get to speak to parents about parenting especially to moms is i always I always want to take the opportunity to say you're not responsible for your child's happiness that's really important i think I think we got this idea that it's our job to make sure our kids are happy all the time. Yeah. Um, and that is a job, that is a task, that is a weight that will crush you. You are responsible for your happiness, for mm -hmm. your presence, for your engagement. That's one of the, man, one of the greatest things you just ground in this book so well is that what our kids need are parents who are, are engaged with them, love them well, and love God and are becoming whole healthy adults, right? So simple. Yeah. Um, and yet it feels really, yeah. really tough to crack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, um, I remember when, um, you know, we, our kids are a bit younger and especially, you know, my first born, uh, you know, when I was asking her to do something and she wasn't doing it. And I said, Mercedes, I want instant obedience, right? I, I was trying to drive this point home. I want you to respond. I want you to obey. I, and I just remember the Holy Spirit saying to me, yeah, so do I. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's good. And I just, I remember that feeling. And there's been so many of those moments as I've been parenting and doing my best, right, to, to kind of try to teach and instruct and correct and guide where there's so many of those things where, where God used it to reflect back to me to say, yes, yeah, Samuel, great thought. That's actually what I want. That's, but I, I need that to start in you, you know? And, and so I, I, I just think the more we want to see our kids healthy, you know what I mean? We want them to be happy. We want them to be successful. Great. Start here. Start inside me as a parent. Start inside my thoughts, my mo emotions, my my relationships, my you know mental health, my emotional stability, mm -hmm. my you know all of those things beginning here. So um, keep, may, maybe keep going on that because I, I love I love your your thoughts and intention around that. Okay, oh, becoming becoming yeah. the, you know because yeah. like like uh, something we have to remind ourselves a lot. I think is that we're actually not um, we're not we're raising adults, but we're not working with adults, right? Mm -hmm. We have to remember that we're working with a ten-year-old, a five-year-old, a fifteen-year-old, and they have different different resources. And something that has happened more than once in my house is I will be getting so frustrated with the girls, and maybe we're in their bedroom. This is this is a real scenario. We'll be in their bedroom. I'm like, girls, this room is not acceptable. When you treat your room like this. You are disrespecting me. You're disrespecting mom. And then Sarah and I will go 
into the bedroom and her side of her side of the room is just pristine and then my side is just tornado alley and she'll just look at me with this like kind of did you catch it did you, did you see what just happened there you're like yeah absolutely um oh i like that i like that the lord uses good. my wife as that mirror quite often yeah. and, the, and the i think the the beauty of that is because if we can man if we can really accept ourselves as being in process and really commit ourselves to growth. And when those things reflect back at us, we make space for our kids to be them. You know, yeah. one of the things yeah. that uh, I, I try and remind parents of, all that, and I don't, I don't work with a ton of um, developmental stuff. I, I work mostly with adults, but something, whenever I'm working with adults who are parents, you wanna remind them like, the kid that you see when you look at your child is gonna be the kid that you bring out when you look at so if you look at your child and you got this narrative in your head oh my gosh they're so disrespectful they're such a brat they're such this and i'm actually tearing my child down even based on reasonable behavior that would be obnoxious behavior kids can be really obnoxious man the child that i see is going to be the child that i call out mm -hmm. and so we have to be able to remind ourselves that that starts with being able to look at myself with a lot of compassion and say all right you're a normal guy yeah. you're not perfect let's grow so i can look at them and i say you're a normal kid. I'm here to love you. I see you. Let's grow. You know, yeah, yeah. that's super good. Well, you know, um, one of the things I feel like, uh, you know, when it comes to raising great kids and hey, uh, there's a few people saying something on you right now. I just want to say what's up to everybody. Thanks for jumping in. So excited to have Dr. Brian with this. And even Pastor Andrew Cabal all the way from Australia. Uh, it's good to have you guys jumping on. Um, wow. You know, when when I think about raising kids and, and I'm, I'm not, you know, the, the expert of all experts, I've been having yourself and all kinds of great parents on all day. It's been super fun uh, mm -hmm. to just keep gleaning and, and learning. But one of the things that, that I have, I feel like is God designed your kids. Now, yet yeah, do they have sin nature and like the Bible says, correction drives it out. Yes, we have to work on those things, but our children are actually designed DNA by God to thrive, um, to be, uh, you know, kind of carry purpose, value, right? They've got destiny born into them by God. Um, yeah. So I feel like so much of parenting, while I'm correcting some things out, I'm also in a lot of ways just create, I'm, I'm actually a soil manager. I, I'm a farmer wow. looking at the conditions of the soil. If my kids are a seed, right, being planted into the soil, a lot of what I feel like is not necessary. I'm not the seed creator. That was God, right? You know, obviously you. That's so good, man. But, but God is the DNA designer, right? And he designed them for purpose. He designed them for greatness. So, so much of what my job is, is to just foster the environment where that seed can grow, right? So if I'm thinking like that and, and, what, what would maybe be some atmosphere things? What would be some things in the home, things in our marriage, things for my kids? What would I want to create to keep seeing health grow, keep seeing my kids be raised? What, what would that maybe look like in your mind that we as parents should be thinking about? Man, that's so good. I, I, I love the way that we are soil uh, managers that we we are we've been stewarded with the soil, not the seed. That's that's the core, I think, of of, of biblical parenting. And we think about environment because I think a lot about container, right? As as the parent, that's what I hold myself responsible for. I really try not to hold myself responsible for Livy or Sam or their good days or their bad days, their behavior. I really try and think, okay, it's my job to set the container that they're in. Uh, and like, I love that language. It's even better, like the soil. And I think, okay, number one, number one, easily far and away. And, and the beauty of this one is this one, this is one that nobody will disagree with. That clinical psychologist, pastor, the most important thing you can do to set that soil is to really adore your spouse, mm -hmm. to genuinely like them, to just, to just delight in who they are. Because when, when your kids see you not just like getting along and we communicate oh well we communicate all right but really delighting in them they yeah. learn to delight in each other right they we're wow. modeling for them what connection looks like and i see i think so often the bar in our culture is just like um marriage is this kind of like ball and chain and we're just we're just trying to like figure out how to not fight 
No, 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 no. Yeah. Man, you, the greatest thing you can give your kids is just, and, and I'll even do exercise. Like, oh, if I'll, I'll be like, oh my gosh, I haven't, I haven't sent Sarah an affectionate text in a couple of days. I will think back to the most recent moment of like really deep friendship. Maybe we were out to dinner. Maybe we were on a date or something like that. I'll just think back to that and I'll let it stir me for a second. So I'm really like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful for that woman. And then you take a step right. But stirring that up for yourself, I think is the most important ingredient to their container their environment yeah i love that and i see the power of that the is there any is there any maybe deeper insight why is it why is it that that parent to parent like affection and stability there maybe, maybe i'm using the word stability maybe that's it why is it that love loving your spouse helps a kid so much what, what is it about that well, I think now, now um, I'm venturing a little bit into like neurological theory, but you, you can look at the, the child's, like the way that their nervous system regulates itself. At infancy, it's that most children are really only focused on one primary caregiver. For most kids, that's mom, right? And, and really, this is pre-verbal. It's even, it's even pre-conscious. They, they don't even have the concept of separate person yet. And the way that they downregulate their body, they calm their body down, their nervous system calms itself down is by contact with mom's body. And then that grows a little bit separate, and, and now they want, to kind of, they want to calm themselves down by being able to see mom looking at them and reassuring them. And maybe that's like uh, 10 months, and then dad becomes a really important part of that process too. But by the time they're like uh, somewhere between two and three years old, they now understand relationship. They now understand separateness and relationship. And you think, man, the same way that your nervous system tells me that the whole universe is a safe place and I can calm down. Our relationship becomes that nervous system for them. Our relationship becomes the thing that tells them, wow, the world is safe, calm down. And so it really becomes um, a matter of we can, uh, we can reassure them that we love them and be really delight in them. But if they see us, disconnected and tense they are it doesn't matter how reassuring we are of them they are going to look at that and they're going to say the universe isn't secure you know it, it feels unstable wow. yeah wow. that's incredible uh, that how amazing is it that how god designed that you know what i mean how god designed family right and of course not everyone's in an ideal environment not everyone that you know, so yeah. great, and and so we understand that. But the ideal way of God designing family, mom, dad, kids, the dynamic there—that it's so much more than just parents keeping their kids alive until they leave the home, right? Buying meals and whatever. It's there's such a more deeply spiritual, emotional thing going on that that is is more the caught than taught. It's the more felt than necessarily yeah. like. It's not always just yeah. the life lessons you're saying to your kids. It's all these other dynamics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. Th thank you for leaning into that a little bit more. I just, I feel, okay, so I'll let you keep going, but I, I just feel like that's come up a few times. And I think there's, there's something about that, that e even though I didn't really mm -hmm. focus on marriage a lot, you know what I mean? I, I, I make a couple references to that, but, but healthy kids, if you're a healthy you, right? I did talk about that, but that marriage dynamic, that strength in the home, um, as much as you, you need to try to fight to be a good parent, it's to be a good spouse. And, and not just good, but like healthy, in love, passionate, right? Those things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I try and use the word delight because delight is like that separate word that tells people, oh, he's not just talking about getting along. It's like what you're saying, passion, like really a sense of, enjoyment with each other and that obviously has just like massive ripple effects because when we feel really connected to our our spouse like the person who's got our back we feel connected to them we 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 love them we, we feel gratitude for them we feel more centered in ourselves and we treat the people around us differently so the ripple effect is i think it's like which is, it's god's design that yeah. that order comes from the top and chaos comes from the top and it, and it goes down yeah that's super yeah. good what would be some other kind of atmosphere things um, for your home, for your kids? The second, the second biggest one uh, that I think has been helpful for me in my own kind of discovery and, and journey is realizing that 
um, probably the most helpful thing I can hold on to when my kids are being challenging and they're needing some guidance and some discipline. Um, because discipline is a really loving thing to offer your kids. So you want to offer it in love. That's the goal, right? We want to discipline, not, not take this idea that like, um, yeah, there's a, there's a popular idea right now they, in like within some what they call attachment parenting. It's like you should just hands off and the, the child will figure everything out for itself. No, they become sociopaths if they figure everything out for themselves. They need, they need to be taught who they are so they can discover that. But, um, but it's just is, as the anchor is I will actually uh, coach parents to say, all right, I, w- I want you to repeat after me. Everybody say, oh, no. And what that is, it's that thing you call out when you catch your kid either talking back or being disrespectful or being disobedient or not not, not doing what they need to do. Something that that um, that garnishes the consequence. And oh, no, is this way of me trying to step instead of being me against you. Oh, no, is me being bummed out with you that you made a bad choice and that bad choice is now going to have a consequence. And it's, it's me trying to stand shoulder to shoulder with you and look at the problem, which is like uh, your ability to regulate yourself or the way you talk to me or the way you kept your room or you didn't do your homework, or whatever the thing is. Right. I want to stand next to your shoulder and look at it with you and be like, oh, man, that's tough. Now we got to do the cleanup of, of the mess that we just made versus. So when we don't do that, it's so easy to be like, I said, and now mm. the problem that they have to solve is me. Wow. Right? Like if, wow. When we yeah. get into the power struggle, we're the problem that they're trying to solve. When we are able to stand next to them mm. and say, man, I get it. This is hard, buddy. Let's, let's figure this out. Or, oh, no, you, you, didn't, um, you, know, you didn't follow through on what you said you were going to do, and now there's this consequence. The problem that we are putting in front of them to solve is their behavior now because we're on their team. It, we're not the problem they're trying to solve anymore. Um, and that to me, I think, I think that has saved me un- numer- innumerable moments of power struggles just to be able to say like, oh no, now we gotta do this other thing. Yeah. You, you know, it's interesting as you're saying that, I'm thinking about um, the garden and original sin Ooh. and when god wow. was looking for adam of course he deals with the sin but his first thing is where are you not what is oh, you doing? right it's where are you oh which pastor is, samuel that's so good man which is much more personal it's it's focusing on you know keeping that that relationship that connection that father son dynamic that god had with his kids father kid dynamic um versus just jumping like what the heck <laughs> you know it's more like where yeah. are you? you're leading oh, man that's, having to that's deal so with the consequences of what they did but the yeah. first thing they hear is where are you instead yeah. of what we do wow, you frame it that way <laughs> as you frame it that way pastor sam it's so easy for me to hear what God's voice might have sounded like. Because he didn't say, are you serious? Yeah. I gave you one rule. Yeah. He didn't say that. He said, hey, where are you? Where you are were you? right here. I was connected to you. We were together. Where did you go? And yeah. I've never thought about it in those terms. But, man, that's so powerful. Shoot. I think that's exactly what we're seeing. I'm going to have to add that in the book, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. Man, as you frame that, it just, it, it, you know, reminds me when you've talked about marriage that way is identifying the the enemy, right? And it's not mm. your spouse, right? The, yeah. the giant or the enemy is not them. And and if I see my issue as my wife or, you know, your spouse, it may, it's them. It's no, no, no. We let's, let's remember what the real enemy is here. Then we can fight shoulder to shoulder at the problem. Yeah versus at each other. And this is a great way of kind of drawing that with our kids. Um, and and bo- boy, do I feel guilty of that. My kids, you know, sitting behind the, 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 the screen here, I'm gonna get an update from her after this and all the times that I have made her the problem, <laughs> the problem, the problem, which is good. It's, this is, yeah, and that's the thing about writing a book like this as well. I'm thankful that I had a good, good parents, which I'm gonna interview here, I believe next. 
and I had a good biblical example and I get into the word and I, I glean and I try to apply it. I'm still mm -hmm. flawed and human in my execution of all of all this as well. And so I'm, I'm a work in progress mm -hmm. of that. So I don't mind even bringing my kids on live. You're going, Hey, tell me what I need to work on. <laughs> you know? That's so good. <laughs> Cause I know, I know I got a lot of growth to go myself. So, but man, this, I feel like we're dis we're discovering something here. We're on an archaeological <laughs> dig right now, yeah. Brian. This is great. Um, tell me something else, something else that, that comes to mind. We'll just do a couple more. We've already gone way past the 10 minute interview that I said this was going to be. And uh, I need to let you go and respect your time. But any final thoughts maybe on, uh, on something you'd want to say to parents right now? Yeah, another thing that comes up, I'll, I'll leave you with this one. This is a, this is a favorite of mine. It's been very helpful for me. Another thing, many years ago, another pastor, a friend of mine, um, he, he told me, you know, right, you got to remember, you got to remember when they're little, that you're just, you're just laying cable, man. The lights aren't going to come on for a long time. And it was so helpful because there's those moments where we get so fixated on their behavior or their response, or their tone of voice, or their words, and we think, why isn't this changing? Why aren't you behaving like the adult I want you to behave like? Yeah. And I go back to those words, I'm laying cable. I'm, I'm just like, cable. the walls aren't even up yet, man. The stucco, is all, it's all just raw scaffolding, and we're just laying cable. And in 10 years, I had a high school student, who was a real good friend of our high school teacher, was a real good friend of mine. She used to say, um, Rebecca Kennedy, she used to say that, you know, within the teacher's land, we talk about how the kids have gone to Cleveland. And that means for those few years of high school, their brain just like takes a trip to crazy town and they just behave like crazy people. And they're in Cleveland. And it's like, okay, somewhere in your early 20s, the lights are going to come on and you're going to probably be an even more likable person than you are now. Just yeah. to make sure you give yourself credit. My job is not to make the lights come on in this moment. My job is so, just to be the container and to lay the cable so that down the road, when God, the Holy Spirit is ready to harvest your character and your insight, and your creativity. Yeah. We're laying cable. That's what we're doing. That's right. <laughs> How good is that? That is so good. I, I remember learning years back that in the, from a mental development, which is kind of what you're talking about, there's so much disconnected sort of wiring in those adolescent years that when you say to your kid, you're like, what's wrong with you? Weren't you thinking? And, and scientifically, it's like, no, actually, they weren't. You nope. know what I mean? Like, they literally aren't thinking because we're still in a development process to where, like you said, in these 20s, we're actually, you're firing at a greater level later on. And so reminding ourselves that, yeah, actually, there's a level of, no, actually, they weren't thinking. They weren't in a very real way. They were just chasing dopamine. That's all they yeah. were doing. They were just following the dopamine. Exactly. Ah, yeah. uh, so good. I, I wish I had scheduled this for a three hour conversation with you. Uh, but thank you for taking time and jumping on. Uh, I know you probably had a full day back, but this was amazing. And I can't wait to replay uh, some of these moments. This is, this is going to be really encouraging. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for your review as well. You left a really kind review on the book and taking the time to review. It meant a lot to me. So thank you very much, Dr. Brian. And I can't wait. I know you're coming. Uh, you're doing doing a fall tour. I don't know if you call it that uh, around Awaken, but I know, I think I saw your name uh, coming to Bressy Ranch campus sometime in that tour. And so we are stoked to have you back at Awaken and uh, speaking into uh, all, all of the above. Maybe, maybe I'll have to have you do a, a special message leaning into some of these topics that we just try to scratch the surface on when you come we'll do that. We'll do that chair, that double chair up there. We'll talk there it out. Go. Maybe I'll bring our wives. I love it, man. This has, been, this has been so much fun. I'm so grateful for you, Pastor Samuel. This book, man, what, I, it's, I feel like the most valuable thing we can have on the parenting landscape right now is models not yeah. more yeah. and more and more new teaching but people who are like i'm imperfect like you are like i am and yeah. and many will say like this is what i'm learning and it, this is just gold i'm so grateful for this book dude yeah thank you. thank you brian we'll talk soon thanks again for taking time see you everybody bye guys